Shalom, royal family. The class you are about to hear is taught by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, many years ago. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. Also, royal family, you can enroll in classes designed for the Godhead at www.universityofyahweh.org. Enjoy. Tonight, I want to speak from the law concerning sanitation and cleanliness. And more specifically for the moment, cleansing of the woman after childbirth. Leviticus chapter 12. Verses 1 through 8. This is something that should be taught in grade school. But is not taught in any school. This subject should be taught in the church. And anything that is of God, but it is not taught. And I'm here to tell you that if you think for but a moment on what unclean means to hell, then maybe you could begin to understand the opposite, which is cleansing. To be unclean is to have disease, germs, bacteria, to multiply beyond reason and beyond normal knowledge or awareness. And if you don't understand the danger of taking bacteria into your body, Think about AIDS for a moment. I'm giving you what this nation loves to practice as an example of uncleanness causing death. And Yahweh brings the matter right on down to if you eat shrimp, clam, oysters, snails, Catfish, crab, cup, salad, all that stuff. It's the same unclean thing that caused death. And you may say, well, what does that have to do with a woman being made clean or cleansing herself after childbirth? Well, all women that have had children know that after a child is born, they're unclean. And that there is a lot of blood and placenta and clots and all kinds of fluids, amniotic fluid, and all these things are expelled from the ab ab you know, abdominal cavities, and uterus, and all these areas. And it leaves her in a state of draining this access for a week. And for a boy child, it's 40 days that she's expelling these fluids. And for a female child, it's 80 days. And if a man is sleeping with a woman that is unclean, guess what happens to him? Of course. You want me to, does anybody need me to dramatize that? See, I can dramatize that. If you don't understand that, I can dramatize that. Anybody need dramatization? Or do you understand? Anybody don't understand? If you don't understand, I'll dramatize it. Good, you're intelligent all of this.
Unclean means there is bacteria around. Things that cause sickness abound. You say, well, if the woman is unclean, why doesn't it destroy her? The Yahweh gives her certain immune protection. When she has a child, Yahweh gives her certain hormones to be expelled in her body that enables her to be protected from that uncleanness. So is the baby born to be immune coming through such uncleanness in the process of birth. Even the baby is protected. And in the first week of nursing from the mother's breast, the baby receives pure inoculation from all kinds of disease. Straight from the breast. It's not even milk the first week. It's, what's it called? Colostrum. Colostrum is full of antibiotics that inoculates the baby against disease and against the uncleanness that the mother is carrying for those days. That's how incredible Yahweh is. But see, brother, you are much too old now, and your immune system is not going to resist for long periods of time to be with a woman that's unclean. And you will begin to come down with all kinds of sicknesses and disease laying with an unclean woman. This is the reason that Yahweh teaches us to separate from our women for at least seven days during her monthly period, her menstrual, her issue. You don't sleep in them. Now, in America, in schools and churches and institutions, we're not taught that. You get married and, 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 and you're sleeping with your woman and she tell you I'm old and you hang right on in there, brother. <laughs> and you don't have no sense of it. It does make you feel kind of strange, you know, when you see all this acting and sometimes you wake up and there's blood on the sheet, you know, and blood in the bed and you wake up and there you are. Don't you know that stuff got on you while you slept? <laughs> but you so in love, you hang on in there. And you ask her every night, you through? <laughs> Boy, by the third day, you are worrying her to death. Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> You are really crazy. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. You know, there's nothing nobody can say but just smile because I am telling the truth. <laughs> By the third day, the man is asking her, just take it on off. It's all right. Let's, let's, let's go. Can't wait no more. Unclean. Now, anytime something is unclean and you in it, guess what happens to you when you mess with it? You become unclean. Here is a woman that goes and takes care of her personal business doing her issue, and she goes into the bathroom and she takes care of her personal business, and then she come out and starts kneading your biscuit. You know, rolling and fixing your biscuit. Well, guess what you get a little bit of? She said, well, she washed her hands, man. You better go get your microscope. You better let some blood get on the cloth and let that some hot water get on that cloth for that blood doesn't see that that blood sticks right there. It sure doesn't wash away. What? What? So you be eating blood biscuits and blood sandwiches. <laughs> You wonder why your head started aching sometimes. Man, I just don't feel good, right? You know, plus the bed is spinning. You want to be done fixed? You want those 
Bloody sandwiches, you know? You're not, Yahweh said, don't eat blood. What? Right? Leviticus what? 317, let's read. Let's turn to Leviticus chapter 3. Now see, some of us, we're into the law tonight, see. Some of us violate this verse. Verse 17, read. It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye eat neither fat nor blood. As long as I feed you beans like a cornbread, you don't have to worry about this. What did I tell you? Yeah, right. You don't have to worry about this. As long as I feed you fruits and vegetables and produce and... See, I'm taking care of your health, but when I turn you loose, huh? What? You go for yourself, you go back to your old way, breaking the statutes. You can't get around. This is a forever statute. Now, it's for your health. Fat must be unclean for your body. And so is what? Blood. You are to never eat blood. Hmm? Not sometime, ever. Now you can better believe that when Yahweh gives a law that say don't eat blood, there's a reason. Hmm? There's a reason. Whatever is good for us, she says, go to it. That which will cause you sickness and disease and the destruction of your body and your mind, he says, don't do it. I made it. I've studied it. I made your body. I've studied you. I know it's good for you. I know it's not. Now, you cannot say after tonight, you who hear these words, I didn't know that Yahweh than Yahweh. Tonight, you have to say, mm. And you that are guilty have to say, mm. Oh, Yahweh. Mm. So if you don't eat blood, then people that's handling blood shouldn't fix your sandwich. Oh, Yahweh. That's why in most cultures, men are the cooks. So they don't ever come on the edge. <laughs> you have a man to cook one. Any day, any night, I don't have to say, are you clean? Or else give me an older sister who passed on through that. All right, sister, come on and cook. <laughs> Hallelujah, Yahweh. I'm declaring to you tonight that the sicknesses and the diseases in America, much of it is from... Women that are unclean from childbirth and all that's associated with that, which is every month. Glory to Yahweh. First, you have to know why this is bad. Not just that it is bad, but why is it bad? Then when I go into the cleansing, you will want to do this because you will understand why you should. Now you have some heathen tribes on the earth that drink blood from cattle and different things. I mean, hey, that's a daily, daily ritual. That's a daily meal. They stick a cow and drink glasses of blood every day, twice a day. And drink milk from the cow too. They do it every day. The way they spend their life. Now, as surely as that animal gets disease in the blood, guess what happens to the people that drink it? So you wonder why the human family has animal diseases among us. See how it enters? Through the blood. 
So when you go and if you intermarry or you marry into one of those tribes that's blood drinkers, see what you open yourself up to and your children? Mm hmm? Oh, glory. Now, are you ready? In Leviticus chapter 12, we're talking about the purification of women. Now, men, you can have an issue too. It's different, but you can have one. But the results are the same. Any kind of issue is unclean. And you'll learn all this in following Yahweh's law. Verse 1, read. And the Lord, Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, uh, Why would Yahweh have to speak to Moses concerning purification of women? Pardon? Didn't know. Did not know. Why in the world would I have to come here to such an enlightened country as America? Suppose it is a leader of the world, and I have to speak on purification of women. Why do I have to speak to you about it? You don't know. If you already knew, it would be foolish for me to sit up and just talk about everything you understand as a fact. Verse 2, read. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. Think about it. Three. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Now, the first seven days, she is up straight out without question absolutely unclean. Don't even wonder. The first seven days after birth, ask no question. Brothers and sisters, you shouldn't tolerate your man being with you in the bed at this time. No matter how crazy about you he is, try to get him to understand this is the law of God. Tell him you're trying to save his life, keep him healthy. Me and the baby need the bed. And the boy child, man child, should be circumcised on the eighth day. That's law. Read. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and four. 30 days. How much is that all together? 40. 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 30 is 40. For what kind of child? Man child. Hmm? She shall touch no hallowed thing. What is hallowed? You are to touch no holy thing. Anything that is holy, don't touch it. Now, I am holy. In case you don't know it, I'm telling you, I'm holy. So while you are unclean, don't you touch me. You can't make God a king. I said, don't you touch me. <laughs> is that what Yahweh said? If there's a vessel that is used as a holy, sanctified, set-aside vessel for the use of the worship of Yahweh and whatever, don't touch it. Read. Nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. Now, of course, I am so merciful. And I know that you need to be taught so bad 
that generally at seven days after you have brought your child, I allow you to come here during these days of resurrection. Only reason. But it's the law, and it's Yahweh's law, and it must be observed. That's the way it is. I wonder why Yahweh said, don't come into the sanctuary for 40 days. Because evidently you can be spreading stuff around. Hmm? Glory. Verse 5, read. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. Isn't that something? How many days is that altogether? Eighty. Eighty. Is that two and a half months? Eighty, two and a half months? So brothers, you have to get hold of yourself. When your wife has a girl child, a woman child, you have to stay away from her for two and a half months. That's Yahweh's law. You'll live through it, brothers, believe me. <laughs> Glory. Let's look at uh, Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19. Let's start at verse 16. Read. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. Now, you can get away with taking a washcloth and just washing that part, right? Oh, flesh. You mean after you finish with copulation, you got to go get a whole bath? <laughs> so, but I didn't use my ears. Well, you got to wash them. <laughs> you have to wash them anyway. I didn't use my knees. Well, you better wash them. <laughs> you might have used your knees. <laughs> Y'all are taking no chances <laughs> on what you use. So you just watch everything. <laughs> See, some of us try to take shortcuts. Some of us run to the shower and just turn to the shower and face the shower and wash off and jump out. No, no, no. You got to have to wash your face too. In your ears, and the back of your neck, and your whole body, all under your arms, your toes, and your ankles, your legs, and that's called cleanness. Brothers, it means you can't turn over and go to sleep. You have to give that habit up. You know how you just finish and just turn on over? Sorry, you don't have to say, and wow, after you get that bath. <laughs> and see, even after you get through doing all that, you're still not clean. Some of that stuff is still on you. Even after you have bathed yourself down, a close examination of the smell is still hanging around. That's some rough stuff that's hanging around after a bath and you still be clean until dirty till the evening. That's some mean stuff. And if a woman is not used to being clean, 
that stuff is meaner still. That can really be rock. Some of, I don't know how some of you live together. Either one of you. I pass by some apartments and I can smell them a half a block away and I'm not lying. And you can too if you used to being clean. You can smell them all. You can smell it for half a block. You can smell it. Even on a cool, rainy day, you can still smell it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We're talking about being clean and getting rid of disease. So I'm sorry, brothers, you're going to have to get up and wash everything. Verse 17, read. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even. I don't sleep on no skin. You sleep on sheep. Today, your skin is the sheep. Or the towel that you laid on. If you laid on a towel, you got to wash the towel. If it gets on the sheet, you got to just get on up, get up, you lazy folks, and change the sheet. Don't like changing the sheet? I guess you better get a copulation sheet. Get yourself a copulation, one of those great big beef cows. That's, I guess you better get one big as a bed. Especially if you one of those hoppers, you be hopping all around. You. <laughs> the only look at Solomon and me, you know you need to change that thing. <laughs> Anybody think I should teach this kind of class? It's in the, I'm just teaching what's right here in the book. <laughs> Shocking, isn't it? Wow, this is in the Bible? What church you've been going to all your life? <laughs> wow, this is in the Bible? Well, what was the name of that high grade class and health class you took in school? Your teacher must have had their heads in the sand somewhere. Because hmm? here it is. We were not taught to be clean, were we? My. And you wonder what's wrong with America. You wonder why so many babies die so early. You wonder why people are dying so young. You wonder why cancer is up and all other diseases are up, up, up. Everybody's just dying, dying, dying. Sick, sick, sick. The biggest industry in the world is, is hospitals and doctors. Why do you think that exists? People are unclean. So who do the people need? Yahweh. Yahweh. You need Yahweh. The knowledge of Yahweh. Stop all of that. And it says in this verse, every garment. So brothers, if you have your shorts on, Sorry, you should have taken them off. Since you didn't have time to take them off. <laughs> Some of you be in such a hurry. <laughs> You'll just have to take them on off. All you all in such a hurry, you'll have to take them off. Because Yahweh said, if it got some of this copulation on it, 
They got to know. You can't be walking around all day with that on. Gosh. Verse 18. Read. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. See, sister, you don't escape either. You must do the same thing. Yahweh does not leave this to your imagination. You must bathe with water. And you got it made in this society. In most cases, you have running water. In some cultures, you have to just have a basin, you know, have your little bucket or your pan. That's the way it is. You know, you have to rinse it off and wash it. <laughs> To get back in there some more. <laughs> get as much as you can off in that bucket, you know? No wonder you're being clean until the evening. You, <laughs> you be smearing that stuff all around from the bucket. <laughs> Hallelujah! So I'm praying for all you lazy folks to take on a new spirit. It's rough when you have a habit of laying back to get up, you know? It is. It, it, it really takes effort. Because you'd be so tired sometimes. <laughs> you already worked all day. <laughs> Ate dinner, then get tired again and talk about get up. I'll do that in the morning. I always take a shower in the morning. I'll just wait. No, get up! <laughs> and bathe yourself. Somebody do some bathing. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. So you can have two kinds of issues you can see here. One is the issue in blood. And to touch her, you're unclean until the evening. Now let's go over to verse 2. I'll give you another side of the education. Read. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean. So what kind of issue is that? What? A sore. You know, you squeeze and pus come out. How many know what pus is? All right, you've had an infection of some kind, you burst this thing and stuff runs, and it'd be just running. It doesn't go away, it's just steady running. So what is that called? An issue. If it's running, if you just bust a bump, it had butt pus in it, you can still hang on in there. It's okay, because see, it's, it's gone. But if, if it's running, hmm? you've seen those kind of sores that just keep running. Well, you better run from it. <laughs> hey, fella, you got something running? Uh-uh. Back off. You might have syphilis. <laughs> yeah. What that running thing is? You, now, I don't want your herpes. I have herpes running. Back off. Sister, you see your man running with some, something running? You come hauling out that bed. Hold it, baby. I love you, but I don't love your issue. Uh-uh. No, no. How many understand? Verse 3. 
3, 3. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue. It is his uncleanness. A lot of diseases in there, huh? Read. Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean, and everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. Unfit for you. If he sit down in a chair, it doesn't matter where the issue is. Whether it's on his leg, his thigh, his posterior anatomy, his back, or his arm, or his hand, wherever he sits, that upon which he sat is unclean. Evidently, Yahweh is concerned about cleanliness. If something is unfit for you, you sure don't want it all over you. Suppose a person has a, a man has a running issue on his arm and you're sleeping with him and he just, in the middle of sleep, just lay his arm over across your nose. <laughs> <laughs> That's y'all here. The little leaf of such. Hmm. Oh, you, you know how you be sitting with your mouth open? See, you got problems. You, 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 you are set up for some real serious problems. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you how to live alone. <laughs> Verse 5, read. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. If you touch, touch this man's bed, that's awesome now. You reach out and touch this man's bed, that's kind of if you're running sore, and you have to go and wash all your clothes. And even after you wash your clothes, you're still unclean. Wonder why sickness is on the earth? Disease is on the earth? Do you wonder why we, the children of Yahweh, the nation of Israel, who are beginning to practice these hygienic, hygienic laws, cleanliness of Yahweh, are not coming down with the diseases of America? Can you see why we are not coming down? Those who practice the law won't come down with those kinds of diseases. Get around the way. Seven fifteen. Turn to around the seven fifteen. See, you may have had it, but look what Yahweh's going to do for you. Read. And the Lord Yudewape will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Everybody that hates us, who practice Yahweh's law, are going to come down with these diseases. And you will have none of them. Even if you have it, Yahweh said he'll take it away from you if you keep his law. Royal family and friends, thank you for listening. 
please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, please visit us at www.yahweh144000.com and also you can enroll in the University of Yahweh by visiting us at www.universityofyahweh.org. Royal family and friends, have a glorious day in Yud Hey Wav Hey. Shalom, Royal family. <laughs>